Hey everyone, welcome. Today I'm going to take you through the scenic driving route from Lisbon down to the Algarve, specifically to the town of Sagres, but this route could apply to anywhere on the Algarve coast. If you stayed on the highway the whole time from Lisbon to Sagres, the drive would only take you about three hours, but the scenic route with these stops in different coastal towns will take you four and a half hours and that's without getting out of your car to take photos and eat food and stuff. So it'll take you longer than four and a half hours, but it is more than worth it. And why wouldn't you do this? Like you're in Portugal, come on, live a little, okay? Try the route. So our route includes five incredible stops along the coast. Um, we were inspired by the route from sunsettravelers.com. Their route is a little bit longer, so we modified it to fit what we wanted. I'll put actually a Google Maps link down below that you can look at and like literally follow our exact route if you're ever trying to drive this route. How many times can I say route? Holy shit. In the first half of this video, I'll be going over the five different locations we stopped at and just a little bit about them. In the second half, I'll be talking about some driving tips and just some information that I wish I knew before we started this drive. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first stop is Signs. Signs is a small city an hour and a half south of Lisbon. It features historic streets, sandy beaches, as well as rugged rocky cliffs. Here we grab lunch. You know what? It was not the best. It wasn't that good, but the owner of the restaurant was super nice. So it's all good. Kind of a win-win. No, not really though, but it was still fine. Our second stop was Villa Nova de Mafontes. It's a beautiful small coastal town with sandy beaches, turquoise water, an arid desert backdrop, and is nestled next to the Atlantic Ocean and the Mira River. Highly recommend driving out to the Arcanjo statue, which gives you panoramic views of the ocean, the town, and the river. Honestly, I could have stayed here for days. All right, next up is Cabo Sardeo. It's located on steep rocky cliffs, which means it has views of the endless ocean. There's a small network of trails and boardwalks to enjoy, which can take you to multiple different viewpoints. Next up, one of my favorite stops that I wish we had longer at is Odache Shmar Beach. It's a beautiful beach with soft white sand, but also waves powerful enough to surf on. This small beach community also has quite a few lovely little restaurants to sit at and enjoy the view. All right, the last stop we made was Borderas Beach. The contrast of the arid green shrubbery, the white sand, the red rock, and the turquoise water make up a stunning scene. And hot tip, on a windy day, it's a perfect place to watch kite surfing. And I'm not talking amateur hour kite surfing. I'm talking people who are literally going like 20, 30 feet in the air. You can sit on the beach and watch this for hours. It's absolutely fantastic. All right, so our final destination was Sagrish. And we actually spent a whole week here, so I'm gonna cover that in our next video, um, a little bit more about Sagres as well as all of the Algarve Coast. But for now, I'm going to explain just a couple tips and things I wish I knew before driving this route. Okay, number one tip, if you're gonna do the scenic route, give yourself a lot of time. This is one thing I wish I could go back and change. We have to be in Sagres by a certain time of day to meet our Airbnb host but that caused us to only make really quick stops at each place. Like I'm talking like 10 minutes per place. If I were to do this again, I would have stayed way longer in each place, even a couple hours, enjoyed the beach, walked around more. So I would say give yourself like the full day to do this, leave in the morning and you're, you're just gonna have a great time. So for renting a car, number one, if you know how to drive manual, you're automatically better than everyone else because it's so much cheaper so much cheaper to rent a manual car in Europe than it is an automatic. Unfortunately, I do not, I don't have that skill. So we rent an automatic, whatever, it's fine. Next, I recommend either getting a compact SUV or a midsize SUV, mainly just for the clearance underneath the car. We had ordered a compact SUV, but somehow ended up with a Toyota Corolla. It ended up being fine, but there's some beach roads and kind of some more like behind the scenes roads that I was very scared of bottoming out the car. And a Toyota Corolla is just not meant for like off-roading. So if you can get a car with a bit more clearance, SUV, compact SUV, but 
don't get anything huge. You don't want a truck or like a giant SUV, like a Suburban or something like that, because the roads in Portugal are quite narrow once you get within the towns and they're kind of like zigzagging around. So it's just a lot easier to have a smaller car, but with a lot of clearance. I may have said my other tips are important, but this is the most important tip. Do not drive in the city of Lisbon. Like there is no point. Rent a car from the airport and then just drive out of the city. Like if you're spending time in Lisbon, you don't need a car at all. The streets are super narrow and hard to navigate. There's also great public transit. So there's no need to have a car. So what we did is we rented a car right from the airport and then left the city. And then the rest of the places you drive, it's fine. You'll be fine. But right when you exit the airport, there's a five lane roundabout, which how the fuck do you do that? Like that doesn't even conceptually make sense to me. Five lane roundabout. So be ready for that. My tip, maybe not a great tip, is just take it slow. Let people kind of honk at you. Be aware not to hit anyone and just try to exit when it makes sense. I don't actually know how to correctly do a five lane roundabout, but I made it through, car was not scratched. You'll, you'll be fine. So the roads themselves, the roads are pretty well maintained. Like if, you're, if you just stay on the highway, it's absolutely wonderful. Obviously for the scenic route, you're going on smaller roads, mostly all really well maintained, minus a few spots where it's super bumpy, a couple of potholes. But if you take some extra roads down to get like closer to the beach, that's when you will find like sandy or dirt roads. Another kind of weird thing is the bigger roads, like the more popular roads in Canada and stuff, like oncoming traffic and you are distinguished by a yellow line, either a yellow dotted or yellow solid line. Many roads in Portugal, it was just distinguished by a white line, but like it was oncoming traffic. It's just something to keep in mind. If you see a white line, don't think, oh, perfect, I'll just go into this lane. No, because that lane might be oncoming traffic. So just understand the road you're on before you're switching lanes all willy nilly, okay? Very important. I think that's it. This video I think is pretty short, but I just think this is a fantastic way to get from Lisbon down to Sagrish. Don't be scared of the drive. It's pretty mellow. It's a ton of fun. Um, I highly recommend it. Let me know if any of you ever go on this route or if you make different stops than we did. I'd love to hear about it. Um, yeah, and in the next video, I'll be talking more about our time actually in the Algarve, in Sagrish, which I look forward to making that video. So hopefully you're looking forward to watching it. I don't know, cool. Thanks so much for watching. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.